Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose and today I figured I would show you my houseplants in an updated video because one, I haven't done one of these in a while and two, as you maybe know from my Instagram or can see, I've been sick for a while. So I'm home, I can't go plant shopping. So why not make a video here? Let's go and start. Let me show you an overview of my upstairs space first. This is our bedroom slash a little bit of um, bathroomy bits as well. And behind the curtain over there is our dressing room. We have a lot of clothes in there and a little bit of an office that we hardly ever use because it gets really cold. So the plant that you saw behind me just now is my huge Epiphanum aureum, Tarzan. He's grown a few new shoots growing down and a few new lighter shoots coming out. And even, normally he came to there. By now, he's grown all the way underneath the spider plant around our beam up to there. So I'm trying to grow it all the way across our huge old beam and down. <laughs> so, Tarzan. Maggie just needed my attention for a moment. She loves to drink here. <laughs> Then over here, we have my little fern that's grown a lot, as you maybe can see. All of these are new. It seems to be really happy in this corner, which is a little bit darker. And I make sure I do water him enough. But I love how fluffy he's become. He's become really a lot more full and bushy than he was before. So I'm not moving him. He gets to stay there. One of the only plants who survives in this corner. And then over on this side, my boyfriend's old surfboard and my huge fiddle leaf fig, Viola, or Ficus Larata. These two leaves came in just behind each other. As you can see, one is a little bit damaged because it got stuck. And when I noticed and helped it out a little bit, then right away this next leaf came out as well. And it's been doing great ever since. I didn't know they could put out leaves in like October, November, but he did, she did. And I love it. Look at that, so beautiful. All my plants are a little bit dusty because I don't dust them up here. This is upstairs. This is not my main focus of plants. I think she's especially happy with our new roof light that we put in a while back. So now a lot more light can come in down from straight up, which will help her to grow up more compared to just this window that she had before. Over here is my Serapigia woodii. It's been growing very quick this last summer and autumn. So I keep cutting it back. This is my boyfriend's side of the bed and he doesn't like the plant hanging down um, onto him when he gets in bed. But yeah, as you can see, it's got some new offshoots because of the cutting. Ooh, here's a new, ooh, where are you? New one. And the cuttings I put back into the pot, so it's become a little bit more full, as you can see, on all sides. I also gave some cuttings away, and I have a few more downstairs, so that's doing really well. On this side, we have my cacti collection that hasn't died yet, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> I learned recently that this one is a blue cactus that lost a bit of the blue, but still. And then these ones, I watered them recently because I thought you'd never water cacti. And then I saw <laughs> that people actually water cacti twice a month and I maybe water it twice a year. So I started to water it a bit more. They are adorable, they just don't do much. And I like to take care of my plants. This one is a mean one. Do you see the little hooks on the spikes? They hang onto your fingers really well. <laughs> I know from experience. So these were actually on one of the shelves uh, above the bed. But obviously they don't, they don't get very much light there. So now I put them in the window for a bit. It is annoying with the curtains closing and opening, but I mean, health of the plants above everything, right? 
then here is my begonia maculata that i moved upstairs i to be honest got a little bit bored of it so i figured it would be less taking up less space upstairs and it seems to be quite happy it's putting out a lot of new leaves because it's getting a lot more light here than it was downstairs here's another new leaf about to open here's one i did notice the leaves are almost like translucent here so maybe it got a little bit too much sun especially this one i know the colors are different when they are younger but look you can literally see through it but we'll see it is winter so it's not getting that much light although this is a southern window you can see this huge uh building that's my neighbor's house that blocks out a lot of the sun during the winter time because the sun doesn't get over and it's just coming out now for us hello sun an adorable old calendar i got from my family-in-law <laughs> look at the kittens anyway you're not here for kittens this is my other window upstairs the big plant in there is my hibiscus flowering plant that i actually was gonna cut back all the way back to the stems you'll see these everywhere because as you can see i have a lot of fungus gnats and i'm trying to catch them and kill them and also i had thrips and spider mites especially on this plant this had a lot of spider mites you might be able to see the damage here do you see all the little dots those were all created by spider mites that i killed i sprayed it off i put it outside for a while so it shouldn't have any more live ones and then i also put this stuff in which held on to predatory mites specifically for spider mites so it shouldn't have pests anymore but you'll still see the the leftovers of the predatory mites and stuff but actually i haven't cut it back yet because it's flowering all over the place now so I'm just gonna let it flower and then see if I cut it back afterwards because it's really stocky. If you look from here, it's really long. I prefer it to be more bushy and small. This is my jar of succulents. This is mini jade plants and my one and only Sansevieria that I own. It was a cylindrica, but then new growth came out that's different from that. This is not doing well. I watered it yesterday because it was super, super dry but now it's super wet, so I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really like it. If anyone wants it, you can come and pick it up for free. <laughs> Sorry. In this bird's cage, I have my little terrarium thing that I created. Let me show you. This is the one with the um, peperomia with the red undersides. That's growing a lot. It's coming out of the jar. Let me grab it. Whew. That's heavy. So... This is the one that kind of failed because it has more earth soil in there than plants. But I do think the plant looks really adorable. This is the Pilea something, I think. And then there's also the uh, Senecio Himalaya in there that I don't think is doing very well. Look, it's rotting a little bit because it doesn't get as much of the nutrients as the other two that are going crazy. I also noticed something really cool in here. The, let me show you from this side. The new growth on the red peperomia is got some really nice colors and patterns on the leaf. It almost looks like a peperomia prostrata now with the design, don't you think? I love it. Oh, but this is way too heavy for one hand. Let me just put that back. Bye. Then over here we have my Peperomia polybotria or raindrop peperomia. It has these little, this thing in there that's against thrips. It has predatory mites in it. Put out a new leaf recently. So it seems to be a little bit happier in this spot, getting a little bit more light, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I should turn it around more because as you can see on this side, it's very no leaves and the other side is very full of leaves. And then in my little office, the only plant we have, because this is a northern facing window, say hello to our new solar panels, by the way, and our new garden, which you may have seen progress. But anyway, this is my Kalinkoe 
or mother of a thousands and since I moved it back inside in this window it started to flower so that's really cool in three different spots yeah I hope she does okay inside and in case you're wondering what that is behind Johanna Basford is the creator of some amazing coloring books this is what I used to do when I had my burnout I colored books to make me more chill actually let me show you my favorite part my favorite page this is enchanted forest let's see where are my trees at there we go this was during the highlight of my coloring days i learned to do backgrounds i had no idea what i was doing before so i learned all of this from youtube and instagram and i really enjoy it i think her coloring is amazing her well her coloring books are amazing and she just allows you to create art with her guidelines. Little shiny bunny. Anyway, I bought all of her books because her um, she draws a lot of plants. Like this one's called Magical Jungle. This is totally not what you're into, so you can skip ahead if you want. But she draws a lot of leaves and foliage and tropical garden, tropical things. Her first book is called Secret Garden, so that's how I found her, with some really cool foliage things. Maybe this got me started into plants. <laughs> her parents were botanists or something, or her grandfather, I don't know, but yeah, a lot of planty stuff in there. Maggie wants some attention. I don't know if you saw this part yet. This has now got um, tiles and a mirror. And this bowl that was created by my mom. Maggie loves fresh water. Hello. And even lights, but we still have to buy the bulbs. So this is like a theater mirror with five little bulbs on top. And a cute little kitten on the bottom. Yes, I know you want some fresh water. But there's water in here. Come on, drink. Drink this. Over here, I stored our outdoor plants that need to be frost free. They don't need much light in the winter. They just need to stay warm enough to not rot. Just a little overview of our kitchen. Everyone's always really impressed with the ceiling. These two plants are still doing well. The areca palms, I think. There's some new leaves coming out. This, these don't grow very fast. Might have to do with the amount of light. There, I put a piece of lily there that needed a little bit more light. And then we have a um, literal <laughs> ivy from our garden that I thought would look cute inside. So we're trying to grow that here. Definitely growing up to the light. And then the rest of the thing is covered in a peppernum aureum and spider plants. I'm going to show you up close. And the way I do that is by climbing up onto the fridge and the um, counter so that we can have a look around here. This is what that looks like. Standing up high with plants behind me, just at eye level, so I can see them. This Apeperinum aureum wasn't doing very well, so I had to cut it back. And it's starting to do a little bit better again. It had root rot and some pests. Then I took a lot of cuttings again, which you can see here, there's new growth on basically all of them. Let's see where. I saw that new leaf here. So, and also the little pockets of um, thrip killers. Then a big spider plant my boyfriend didn't like, so now it's sitting up here. My grandma's um, jade plant, or Shrek ears, I think it's called. The aloe moved up here. And then these two are Stock and Brock, my two Pachira aquatica that I completely cut back. I'm hoping they'll start to grow again in the spring, but we'll see. My string of bananas, that wasn't looking very nice, so I put all the cuttings in a big thing like this, hoping they will become separate plants while they are still connected to the mother plant. So I hope that was a smart decision. <laughs> and then my best looking, ew, why are you rotting? Ugh. And then my best looking a peppernum aureum at the moment, except for Tarzan. This is growing all the way over there, all the way over here. 
these guys are taking over my house slowly. But also was dealing with pests in them, so more pest prevention. And some blue thrips catchers. Window still on this side. This is also the north facing side. Uh, one more aloe and this um, Christmas cactus or Easter cactus. I don't know. That's flowering like crazy right now. So yeah, that's pretty cute. My garden. On the other side of the kitchen, we have my Monstera's Peru. That's not doing very hot. I put it in water recently because it had a lot of infestation of pests. So I removed all the soil. I cut off all the parts that were too infested and now I'm hoping it will grow back. Hello, my little jar of money in a unicorn form. And then this um, sago palm that was outside the whole summer. I'm hoping it will survive the winter so it can grow another pair of leaves for me. There are some white bits on here that look like skeletons of dead bugs. Let me try and show you. Can you see that? I'm not sure if they are skeletons of bugs, but it doesn't seem to be alive, so it's okay. And that's a baby of my Kalenkoe because they are everywhere. Hey, Knappert. Handsome fella. We made it to my living room. Mickey's favorite place. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's very strong, so. Come on. Come on. <laughs> He's my favorite. And then on this side is our living room. Quick overview before we get close. With my favorite spot right there in the corner, <laughs> looking at all my plants. Let's start on this side. So some of you may remember Claire, my Anthurium clarinervium. She died completely. Well, she's not dead, but she's not happy. This is what's left of her, one leaf that looks really not happy. Someone told me it's because of lack of humidity. It can't be because of too much sun, because the sun is right there and it doesn't even get here. The roots did look okay. I put her in semi-hydro when she got sick and seemed to be green and fuzzy and happy. So that's not the problem. This one did put out a new leaf recently and then I broke it off. Whoops. And it was two plants, so I put the other half in here because there were so many roots. This hasn't shown any sign of life since I repotted it, but it is still alive. There's some like pointy thing in there that used to be a leaf. Oh, wow. This just fell over and I caught it with one hand while I was filming. I'm impressed with myself. Let me just put that down. Ugh. These things are disgusting, but they seem to work, so... Huh. No! Just stay. Okay, so not much happening in the Anthurium department over here. I'm not giving up. I'm keeping them until spring. If nothing happens then, then I might throw them away, but or give them away. But I'm not impressed so far. Over here, Syngonium Babette, which is doing pretty well, I think. There's new leaves coming always. It just, I don't know. I don't like it as much. I mean, I like the color, but it doesn't bring me joy as some of the other plants do. So it's here for now. I don't know what will happen to it. And then next to it is Philippe R. Strelitzia. This is a big boy that hasn't shown much growth since we got it, except for this one leaf that seems to be slightly stuck in the stem because the leaf came out right here instead of having a little bit of a stem in between. So I don't know what's up with that. He might not be as happy as I want him to be. Or maybe I just need to be patient because it's November. <laughs> you never know. 
Here is my beautiful cutting that I got from my mom of Philodendron Bipenifolium. This is a new leaf that came out really nice. This is the first leaf that came out here. It looks a little bit lumpy and chunky, but that's okay. And then another new leaf coming. So this guy seems to be doing quite well. Doesn't take much care. Just I let it sit there and I spray it every now and then. This is the cutting that I got for free in one of the shops because it was broken off of the main plant. This is a philodendron erubescens or red emerald. And this baby leaf is new. Oh, finally, it took so long for this leaf to unfold. And when it did, it immediately, of course, showed a new petiole. And the other one is also unfolding. This is it. This was the not top cutting, the other one. So that's really exciting. And yeah, seems to be finally doing well. I hung it up here because I think it looks cute in our little setup. Oh, the sun is a bit bright, hold on. I just moved to the other side to give you better lighting. This is my Marantha Luconator Fascinator Tricolor with one dried out leaf. That also got pests, so I put it in semi-hydro. And finally, it's starting to grow again. It didn't seem to like it for a while, but there we go. Some new leaves coming out. We'll see how it does. Just always fascinated with the leaves on these because it's such a like regular plant now, but it's still stunning. Especially because one leaf of it is lemon lime and the other ones are tricolor. Pretty cool. Here's the two old ones that I have, the Pileas, Pilea Glauca, and I forgot, but it's doing pretty well up there. Here is my Philodendron Scandens. It's a really chunky body. The back doesn't have many leaves, but that's okay because I have it here in this covering all my camera gear. And I did notice that it is growing a lot, but it, the leaves are becoming smaller and smaller. So I'm thinking about giving it something to grow on. Because I mean, the little hearts are adorable. But I like the big hearts too, so I might give it something to climb up a little bit more. What do you think? And then here we have the um, Calathea Burl Marks Amagree that I got from the greenhouse tour. That seems to be doing well. It's just adorable. It sits here on my working table desk thingy. And on this side is my Pilea peperomioides that's grown to be pretty big. It started to hang a little bit with the leaves, so that's why I put it in this little setup. So it comes off even better. It's got some new leaves in there. Overall, it's just adorable. I mean, it's now kind of normal, but I still think it's adorable. Here is Billy. My banana plant that put out a lot more leaves this summer so now it's really got like a nice chunky stem my boyfriend says it's really starting to look like a tree instead of a plant and then we have Arends, my monstera which i cut down a while back this is the new leaf of the new growth that i cut off and then this is the new leaf on the old growth that came out. Here's another new leaf. Still, everything is a little bit hairy, as you can see. Some nice new aerial roots coming out. Yeah, and then I noticed recently there's a little point of growth on the oldest part of the stem, so I'm hoping that will grow as well. Really happy with how he's doing in the south-facing window. He's getting a lot more light, so he's a little bit more happy. Behind here, I hid my one and only orchid, Anya, because orchids don't need that much care and I prefer to ignore them. And one of my Birkins. I have five right now, but I'm giving away a few and I'm selling a few. 
These are Tulsi, which is uh, like a, a kind of ba basil, basilicum in Dutch, but a holy basil from India that I got from my mom and from my mom's friends from the yoga community. So really cool. Really nice colors on some of these. Then here's another Birkin. Here's another Birkin. This one I've sold through the internet, so I'm gonna send it soon. This one is a prize of a giveaway that's starting on Friday. And then there's one more Birkin, just to keep the collection complete. That was hidden behind the other plants, so it's set back a little bit. But I'm hoping now that it's got its own pot, it's gonna grow more. A little bit overgrown by my friend Arendt, but here is Mushu, my ring of fire philodendron with, I think this is a new leaf that grew in my care. Not a lot of white or yellow on there. And then this is also a new leaf that's just about unfolding. It's adorable. Yeah, I'm not as impressed as I was when I found these plants, but I'm still holding on to it for a little bit. I might sell it because it's taking up a lot of space and I don't have that much space. In this one, I put together all my little alocasia, my plug plants, because they weren't doing very well after the pest infestation. So now this is a jar of alocasia black velvet, alocasia pink dragon, as you can see from the stem over there. And then this is the silver dragon. It's really nice. The leaves are really maturing and growing quite big. So I'm hoping these will readjust soon. This is still my favorite type of leaf. Oh, so pretty. Then my little pingula, my butterwort that's flowering and it's eating all my fungus gnats, hopefully. The little Hoya I bought a while back that's on this side growing one new leaf and then this leaf is also new. I love the dark color pink on that. When it came out, it was even darker, almost like dark red. Um, this is the other little baby silver dragon that I got and I'm giving it away in the giveaway with this Birkin. This is my part of the prize, prize, prize. So that's really cool. This is Caspar. You've met him a few times before. When I got him, he had this leaf unfolding, I think. This leaf was a little baby. And since then it's it rolled out this one. This one's almost open now. Last part coming here. So I'm really excited for this guy to grow even more. I love the red petioles and the, the whiteness of the leaves when they come out. And then when they get older, it becomes green with more green. Even though this one is still mint, it's not very dark yet. The oldest leaves are, but they're also very much smaller. So I don't know what's going to happen to him. Casper is a mystery. Beautiful mystery. <laughs> some more carnivorous plants. And then this is all cuttings from my Peperomia prostrata that wasn't doing well because it got aphids and also all the other bugs that I have in my house. <laughs> Stop with all the pests. I heard from someone that the leaves can also grow new plants. So I just popped all the leaves that fell off in there, hoping that they will become plants. Venus flytrap. This is the original um, Peperomia prostrata that I made a little hanging basket. I used to do macrame for fun when I was little. So I just used my skills to make it a little hanging thingy. But it's not doing very well, as you can see. I sprayed it off with insect spray recently, and I'm hoping it's going to do better soon. Over here is my string of bananas, I think, that I got a cutting off for free. And my little philodendron imperial green, that's a little bit dry, but is putting out new leaves. And then here is Adam, my Adansonii, that since I gave him a pole, is doing amazing. These top leaves are as big as my hand. They're getting a lot of nice um, holes. Wait, let me show you. Oh, this one broke actually. 
but it's becoming a lot more holy with all the bright light it's getting. And what I love about this one is how attached it got with aerial roots to the pole. Let me show you on this side, yes. See that aerial root? It's completely attached to the pole. Here's, ooh, there's, uh, now. There's another aerial root going all the way down. And it goes like this all across the pole. Do you see them roots? This guy loves my pole, man. Look at that, growing all the way down. So I spray them a lot to make it even more happy. Yeah, that's Adam, he's doing well. And then the most exciting part is on my heat mat right now. So I have three, am I right? Yeah, three Alocasia Caprea in my care at the moment. This first one has got two beautiful new leaves. One is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. I still love them. The second one I'm selling soon. So this is also a new leaf. So I'm shipping this on Monday, but I'm still excited to see because it's got a new leaf in there and tiny new leaf in there. So that's going to be shipped soon. I'm just keeping it on my heat mat here to stay happy until I do. And then my last one is the one that I'm definitely keeping, which is this one. And it's the one with the huge leaf. Let me pick that up for you. This guy is just stunning. Look at that new leaf that unfolded recently. Oh, of course, cat hairs on everything. But check out that head test. This guy is as big as my head for sure. Pretty cool, that's why I bought him. I love you. I haven't named you yet though. What is it? Oh, I did name you. I think I named you Ruby. Kind of forget my own names. I have to make name tags again. Is cuttings I'm trying to grow from my micans. Oh, I didn't show you my micans yet. Um, that aren't doing great. I put them in moss because I broke this part off. And since I have so many pests, I don't know if it's pests or I don't know. I don't know what's happening in my house. As you can see, there's a lot of bits on all the leaves that I keep thinking are pests, but are just bits of stuff. I don't know. Here we have my... Raphidophora tetrasperma that's growing nice and chunky, as you can see. Oh, hello, little fungus gnats flying all around. So it is growing stronger and a new leaf, but this new leaf I think had cold damage because it got pretty cold during that week. So it looks horrible, but okay. It still has the fenestration. It's the first leaf with fenestration. So I'm still excited about it. So here is my first ever pink princess. This is the new leaf. There is one bit of pink on there, or maybe two. And one old leaf, so ignore that. I will cut that off later. I called it Percy. It has some sun damage, as you can see. But I still have hope for this baby to grow some pink leaves. On this side is the second pink princess that I bought that does have a little bit of pink over here and some damage as well over here. This is the one that had one half moon pink leaf and one new leaf about to open. And what did I do? I touched it, so it broke off. Don't ever touch your new leaves. I know now for sure. Yes, some of you told me. Well, I know for sure now. Although it does seem to do something. There is something new coming out, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Hope it brings out new leaves. I'm so sorry, little pinky. This is my other pink princess that is doing really well. It's got, the older leaves have got some pink, as you can see, and this one is almost half moon. And this is the newest one that's been curling up a little bit. I don't know why, but it's got some nice pink in there. And yeah. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this one. 
It's the best success for now. And I gave one to my mom, so I wonder what that one's doing. On this one is Ferry, my Monstera Deliciosa Variegata that I got for free from someone on Facebook. It's got finally new leaves starting to pop out with quite a lot of nice white variegation in there. And the little tip seems to look like it's almost about to come out. Can we focus on that maybe? Yeah? Yes. I do see some aphids on there every now and then, so I'm keeping a good eye on this one. Back of the leaf looks really cool too. Yeah, really happy with this one. And grateful for receiving it because my other Monstera Deliciosa is completely dead now. You may remember I bought it for 50 euros, 5-0, and it died completely. So, yay! Putting everything back the way it was. That's my heat mat with all my favorites. And basically all my favorites are in this southern facing window anyway. Two more spots to show you around my sofa area and this part. Oh, actually this part as well, I haven't shown you. So let's start there. This is the new shelves that I created. You may have seen the video where I create them. On the top is my pencil plant or a pencil cactus and the cuttings of the Seropegia woody eye, the string of hearts and my oils and my favorite people, my yoga people from my teacher training. Then this is my uh, a peppernum penatum sold as Cebu Blue, which it's not. Finally starting to put out new leaves, although they look a little bit funky. There's one in the back here as well. That looks like a normal leaf almost. And one below here. And then a few more on this. So it has a lot of points of growth. Here is my current setup. It's 20 degrees Celsius and 50% humidity. So I'm gonna switch on my makeshift hum humidifier in a bit. Here are some books. My book from Summer Rain that I bought during the stack thing. And I didn't have the English version then, so I got her to sign this cute, cute card. May you sow the earth with green. Summer rain oaks. Pretty cool. These are the uh, slices of the, one of the trees we cut down in our garden that had little hearts on the inside. So I keep them now. I put some essential oils on them to smell nice and keep my house smelling nice. Over here is my huge Marantha lemon lime. That's doing well, even though I had to repot it completely after pests. It seems to be putting out new leaves all the time, so it's doing okay. It survived. Yay! Here is my Epipronum aureum neon. That's also doing well. Some new growth up here. And I thought it was quite normal, but it has like dark leaf variegation in some of the leaves, which I thought was just it reverting a little bit, but it seems to be something cool. So there you go. Got this from Kakieki, I think, a while back. Mm, this is my little jar of two ferns and it sounds like a movie title I don't want to remember, but <laughs> my Marantha, um, no, my Calathea Mosaica that is doing well. It's putting out new leaves. It's got fungus nets like everything else in my house. As you can see, there's one. So I'm trying to catch them, but yeah, it's a struggle. And then here below this, I'm, as you can maybe see, drying my only surviving leaf of my expensive Monstera cutting that's hopefully going to be a reminder of don't buy cuttings without roots. <laughs> Here is my Mykins, Philodendron Mykins, that is doing well again after I completely cleaned and repotted it and I still have some pest things in there. Put it on a new pole. Hello. 
broke off one big part of one of the stems and yet it's still doing okay. It's so hard to get this in the frame, even though it's such a beautiful plant. I feel like it's hard to get good photos of it. You can't really see the beauty. Hmm. Old leaf. But yeah, I love this plant a lot. She's called Peach. This is my way of humidifying my plants. It's my essential oil diffuser that doesn't have any oils in it, just water. Here is my other Anthurium clarinervium that I bought at the Intratein recently. It is getting a little bit of browning, so it wants more humidity, I think. It is right on top of our lovely, adorable, old-fashioned heater with, by the way, new tiles. If you didn't notice yet, this whole thing is new. Used to be a hole in the wall, now it looks cute. But it does create a bit more of a dry situation for the plants on top of it. So this also had some trouble with pests. That's why you see some uh, cut off leaves that were infested. This is actually the plant I posted a photo of. One of you said that looks like a pest. And then I found pests all over my house. So this was my indicator plant. <laughs> um, so I put it in semi-hydro. I don't know what it's doing. It doesn't seem to be doing much, but it's not dying. So that's good, I think. <laughs> then over here, instead of shelves, we now have three little um, square thingies that I put the made the pots for. I showed you that in a previous video. This is the Asplenium. And I potted them up in a way that is showing the plants more forward. So the soil is quite diagonal and then the plant is in there diagonally as well. These are doing well. I also put my little asparagus fern in here because it can take a little bit less light. And then here is the rabbit's foot. I don't know. No, this is not the rabbit's foot. I don't know what kind of fern this is still. Kangaroo paw. You guys have so many different names for it, but it's a nice looking darker fern that's in this dark corner. Over here, I hung up my marantha. Um, it's called... It has a common name in Dutch that I forgot, like ten, 10 commandments in Dutch because of the 10 things that are always on the leaves. But I put that in a hanging basket to make it grow up maybe if it wants to because it wasn't very happy before. You can see the new leaves are very small compared to the older ones. So I'm hoping it's going to do better now that it's getting a little bit more light and some support. And then lastly, we're going over here to Vicky. Vicky is my varicosum that I bought recently in the Bosserand. And I love her so much. Huh? I made her a moss pole that's quite short, but supporting this big stem. And then this point of growth opened this new leaf recently. The colors are still very vibrant, neon almost. Look at that. Vicky, you're a babe, Vicky. Over here on the bottom, I also noticed there is a possible other point of growth. So I'm hoping for that to do something. Put out a new leaf from there as well. And then on this side is the, the chunkier stem with this beautiful leaf and the leaf that I showed you first. And then this one. That is unfolding, hopefully. Oh, I'm giving it some support, so I'm tying it up on the stem. I could tie it up a little bit tighter, actually, so that hopefully the leaves can continue to be nice and big and strong. That's Vicky for you. Oh, I love you, Vicky. So that's it. That's all my house plans that I've got for you today. I'm sorry if my voice sounds weird. I'm sorry if it's a bit shorter than you were hoping. I'm hoping to feel better soon to be able to use my voice and go out plant shopping, show you all the cool plants that Holland has to offer. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel for weekly yoga and planty videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.